Hello and welcome to this video on what is the Spearman-Brown formula. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistical methods such as factor analysis and structural equation modeling, but I also cover topics in psychometrics including classical test theory and item response theory. If this is something that interests you, please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including workshops that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to explain the Spearman-Brown formula. What is it? What is it good for? And I will also show you an actual data example on how the Spearman-Brown formula is used. So let's get started. So on a conceptual level, what is the Spearman-Brown formula? The Spearman-Brown formula is a formula for computing a composite reliability coefficient when you have measures such as items or tests that are considered parallel measures in the sense of classical test theory. Now, what does all this mean? So first of all, let's take a look at what we mean by composite. So a composite is in the simplest form a sum score of multiple test score variables. So for example, you may have four different tests for measuring intelligence or memory or math ability or something like that. And those four components of your test, those subscales or subtests, they can be added up to an overall score. So you can form a sum score variable S by simply adding up those four variables that represent the test scores on your four math or whatever subtests. Also, a composite could be an average. So if you have, for example, questionnaire items, let's say you have a 20 item questionnaire for measuring depression, and so those 20 items you want to aggregate to an overall score, then oftentimes what we do is we average across the items that may be measured on a five point Likert scale or a six point Likert scale or something like that. And then we have S divided by M tests or M items. So we have an average score and that also would be considered a composite. So a composite is the sum or average of a number of test components or items and so the idea is that we want to find out about the reliability of the composite. So the reliability of S, how reliable is the sum score or how reliable is the average score of our items. And we do that, we can do that with the Spearman-Brown formula, assuming that measurements are parallel in the sense of classical test theory. Now, what does that mean? That is a little bit more complicated than the idea of a sum score or composite, because it requires us to understand what a parallel measurement model is in classical test theory. And I have uh, separate videos on this channel that you can check out on classical test theory and classical test theory measurement model in which I discuss various different measurement models in detail. Here we're going to focus on the parallel measurement model because that's the one that's relevant for the Spearman-Brown computation. So what is a parallel measurement model? Parallel measurement in the sense of classical test theory means that your measurements, in this case four tests or four items, measure a common factor or true score variable tau with equal factor loadings and equal error variances. So basically this model has three assumptions. It assumes unidimensionality, meaning that the true score variables for all four tests are identical. It also assumes that the error variances, so the variances of the measurement error variables epsilon are equal for all four tests, and it assumes that the measurement error variables epsilon are uncorrelated. And so then you have strictly parallel measurement in the sense of classical test theory. And this measurement model with equal loadings and equal error variances and a single factor can be tested by using confirmatory factor analysis in, for example, M plus or Lavan or other software programs for structural equation modeling and confirmatory factor analysis. You can fit a model with a single factor. You can fix the loadings to be equal across 
those items or scales and you can constrain the error variances to be equal. And I show that in a separate video on this channel for M plus, how to do this in M plus. So then this measurement model has only three free parameters that are estimated when we fit it in, for example, M plus, um, the mean of the true score variable, which is not relevant for us for the composite reliability and then the variance of the true score variable variance tau, which is relevant as we will see, and then also the variance of the error terms that is constant across tests according to parallel measurement. So there's only a single error variance parameter that's being estimated under the assumption of parallel measurement. And so this model can be tested in um, M plus using CFA, and then you get a model fit test, like a chi-square test, and you can see whether this model is rejected for the data or not. So it's a testable measurement model that allows you to test the assumption of parallel measurement. Now, assuming that this model fits your data well, and you can assume that the measures are strictly parallel in the sense of classical test theory, meaning they're unidimensional, they measure the exact same true score variable, and they have the same measurement error component, then you can use the Spearman-Brown formula to calculate the reliability of S. So how does that work? So first of all, this measurement model here on the left, when we estimate it, only gives us an estimate of the reliability of each component, yi, so each test, each of the four tests for, for each one, I, we will get the same reliability estimate using the parameters that are estimated in this model. So the variance of tau is estimated, and so the reliability of each component is given as the variance of tau divided by the variance of tau plus the common error variance, variance epsilon. So for each component, we get the reliability. However, that's not all that we want. We want to find out what is the reliability of the composite. If we were to use the test as a whole with those four parallel components, then how reliable is that composite that sum when we aggregate those four tests or items to a common or to an overall equally weighted sum score S. And so that's what I want to show you next. So the Spearman-Brown formula is shown here on the right hand side. So that is the reliability of S. And so the reliability of S according to the Spearman-Brown formula is M times the reliability of the components divided by one plus m minus one times the reliability of each component. And so remember that S is the sum of m tests. So in our case, m is four, because we have four tests. And so, but this is the general formula if you have m different tests. And we know that the reliability of yi is given from the measurement model. So in the measurement model, we can calculate or we can estimate the variance of tau and we can estimate the variance of epsilon. And so we can determine the reliability of yi, which goes into the formula for Spearman Brown. So let's take a look at an example. And so here I fit a CFA model of strictly parallel tests in the M plus software. So I had four subtests of a math scale or math test, and I fit the model of strictly parallel variables, meaning I uh, set the loadings all to one and I constrained the error variances to be equal. And you can see that M plus then gives us the three parameters that I mentioned earlier, the mean of tau, which is not relevant for us for Spearman Brown, and the variance components, the variance of tau, which is the true score variance component, and the error variance component, which as you can see here is constrained to be equal across the four subtests. You can see that from the fact that you get the exact same estimate, 21.948 for each subtest, and the same standard error, which here is 0.83. It's the same one, and so you can see those parameters were constrained to be equal so that this model has only three free parameters, the true score mean, the true score variance, and the common error variance component. And so now, first of all, we can use those variance components to calculate the, reli the reliability of each subtest. And so the reliability of each subtest then is given as 
the true score variance component 38.407 divided by 38.407 plus the error variance component 21.948 and that gives us 0.636. So that's the reliability estimate for each subscale under the parallel measurement model. So assuming that that model is correct for the data, each of the four math subtests has a reliability of 0.636, meaning 63.6% of the variance in the test score is true score variance or reliable variance. So it's not super great. So only about, or not even two thirds of the variance that is observed in the test scores represents true score variance. More than a third represents error variance. That's a lot of measurement error. However, keep in mind that this is the reliability of each component, not the reliability of S, the sum. The sum will be more reliable because it's longer, it consists of more components and errors of measurement, since they are random, average out. So if we have more components to our test, then the reliability of that longer test or the sum, the composite will be, by definition, will be stronger, will be larger. And you can see that here when we use the Spearman-Brown formula now to calculate the reliability of the sum y1 plus y2 plus y3 plus y4, so the reliability of the composite, according to Spearman-Brown, is 0.875. So that's substantially higher than the reliability of each component, and that is expected because Longer tests are more reliable, other things being equal because errors of measurement have more opportunity to average out when we have more items or more subtests. So if we were to use the uh, sum of the four tests, then we would end up with a composite that is fairly reliable, has 87.5% true score variance in this sample, whereas each component only has 63.6% true score variance. So that's a useful thing to know. That's why the Spearman-Brown formula is useful because it allows us to compute composite reliability for strictly or essentially parallel measures in the sense of classical test theory. Now, what do you do if this model does not fit? So let's assume your measures are not parallel. They're only tau equivalent or they're only congeneric in the sense of classical test theory. In those situations, you would use a different composite reliability formula. For tau equivalent measures, you would use Cronbach's alpha. For congeneric measures, you would use McDonald's Omega as a composite reliability. And I discuss those measures in separate videos. I have a whole playlist on classical test theory on this channel where you can find a discussion of those other types of measurement models and those other types of composite reliability indices as well. Now, another thing that Spearman Brown is good for is for illustrating the relationship between reliability and test length. And we can depict that in this graph here. So what is shown on this graph, you can see on the x-axis you have m, meaning the number of components or the number of tests, in our case four. And on the y-axis you can see the reliability of the tests and or the sum. And so you can see, for example, here that when we start out with a test that has a reliability of 0.6, which is not great, we can use this graph to estimate how many components we would have to add to that test to make it sufficiently reliable. So let's say we have this case, our test that we have has only a reliability of 0.6, so only 60% true score variance, 40% error variance. But what we really would want is a test with a reliability of 0.9. So we want a highly reliable test. Then this graph can tell us how many components we would have to add to our existing test in order to make it sufficiently reliable, in this case 0.9. So when we go here to the right at 0.9 and then down, you can see that this test would have to consist of six parallel components in order to achieve a reliability of 0.9. And so we would have to add five 
parallel components or five more items or subtests that are parallel in order to achieve this reliability of 0.9 from an initial reliability of 0.6. So that's very useful. So say this law that is implied by the Spearman-Brown formula between the or this relationship between reliability and test length. And so that also shows you again that longer tests are more reliable because you can see that as M increases, reliability increases. And for different levels of initial reliability, it shows you how many components you uh, would have to add in order to achieve a desired level of reliability. I hope you found this video useful. Check out my other videos on classical test theory as well on this channel. Also, I offer a course on classical test theory through Quantfish that you find in the description here for this video. So check that out as well. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time.